Hello and welcome by another video of the Argot Saga. Hello everyone. <laughs> I thought it would be a nice uh, idea to show you how I put up my keikis and introduce them to uh, self-watering. Well, in this case it's actually semi-hydroponic because um, I have eight keikis from my berry oda that we will get in a minute. But I like to get, give them away and I think semi-hydroponic is a little bit easier than self-watering because you flush and thereby water your yogurt. So therefore I like to uh, get those cheap cups with yogurt in and I uh, always save them and I, I like to use them for these uh, kind of occasions. But before we start, um, let's go over to the mother plants and have a look. And I'm going to show you how I collect my keikis. So let's go over and uh, get that berry oda. It's like I am in my own jungle of orchids. It's so beautiful. I really, really enjoy all the blooms. I don't, I hope I'm not going to make you dizzy. But, um, and yeah, this is a bit strange because I'm looking at the screen so I can see the background. But uh, it's really awesome. It's now uh, in the evening and I'm really uh, enjoying being here. I have the fans running. It's not that warm, but that's a bit, a little bit of a uh, background noise you hear. And like uh, Honeybee and Argus, Michael once said, it's just uh, a part of the experience. And I totally agree with him, so therefore I keep my vans on uh, most of the times. So if they are really a little bit too loud, I shut them off, but for now I think uh, it will do. Okay, next to me is uh, the Berry Oda, so I'm going to change uh, my filming position. And I have to put a screen like this, turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. But yeah, here is my berry oda, and um, it has quite a lot of keikis. If I am correct, we can collect eight today, at least seven, probably eight. But um, for me, it's easier to get this uh, at my potting table, so we can zoom in and I can show you how I get these keikis off the model plant. So I will now um, grab it, but now we have a little bit of idea where I have the model plant, if you didn't already. So I'm going to grab the plant and we will uh, get those keikis off. And we are back at the orchid uh, room where I have the berry order on the table. And as you can see it gets quite unruly when you leave them on. I must admit uh, sometimes I um, think well maybe I should let them on. but. It takes up quite a lot of space already because it's the plant itself without the cake is quite quite big already. Um, so it will need its own space. But with these cakes, it grows quite uh, bigger quite quickly because these cakes can get cakes, etc., etc. So therefore, I get them off, and I think they are nice gifts uh, to give uh, to friends or um, something like that. So um, I think we have this one. Kind of nice and short. I will zoom in. I'm sorry, that was my foot hitting the tripod. I'm going to move you a little bit and I'm going to zoom in so I hopefully can give quite a close up for those who are interested in how to remove the keiki. Where are we? Yes, I think we are quite in shot. Uh, when I started doing this, I was kind of going very easy on it, but yeah, you may break a root, but uh, especially with the berry oda, they will survive because it's quite strong. But you will have, you need some roots there about a length of uh, at least three centimeters. And the, it's the rule of three. Uh, three leaves, if I'm correct. Well, we have the more leaves, but uh, so we have at least uh, three leaves, three roots and three centimeters. That's a sort of rule. I must admit, I just take them off whenever I have time and uh, whenever I'm ready. But uh, especially when you start out, you want to have something uh, you can um, basically rely on and know when to get them off. What I do, I pull a little bit and I twist and turn. So I try to grab the argot by the base, the cakey, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, argot by the cakey in this case, around here. Not just above the roots because I try to not break them off. So I have it a little bit higher up. I hold with the other hand, I hold the mother stem and I try to twist and turn it. I already heard 
something breaking so it's I'm just easy and I'm pulling not too much I pull a little bit and I twist and I turn you see that root going um, there so I not, don't want to uh, break that one but yeah if it happens it happens but I try to move it again and there it goes did go almost completely and uh, whoops there it is and um, here it did came off right above my finger a little hole there and here is that cakey where's my lens here it is you can see we have some green left <laughs> left over from the model plant but it's okay I will put some um, cinnamon on it later on and we have one growing root tip these will start to grow again uh, very soon I think so let's grab another one is this the first one and we have another one here I need to zoom out a little bit oh that's zooming in sorry and I move the camera up a little bit and you can see it here the another one or the next one same story but this one has a roots whoops and then we see a leaf roots growing up so I try it to keep them on and I grab the mother stem and I twist and turn and I pull a little bit twist and turn it will come off just take your time just try not to rip it off in one go but just use a few and let it slowly come from that mother plant to avoid as much damage as you can and I pull a little bit harder it's almost there but I will turn it a little bit further and whoop, there it is and same story you see just a little bit of green there that's from the mother stand that's all and uh, we have quite some root tips there so that's the second one I'm going to look for another one we have one here so that one I'm going to take off as well and we also have a new growth here I'm going to leave that obviously I like to have uh, new growths on this plant instead of cakeys but it's, it's a cakey machine basically <laughs> it's try to uh, it likes to make cakeys and I do that with my other hand I twist and turn it and hold the mother plant steady and whoops this one was quite easy and once again we have a beautiful break point there and some roots number three and you see here um, get me let me another cakey and here is another one let me show you that it's a small one I'm going to leave those on those too small and do not have roots yet well, so we have at least two extra last year I had 12 cakeys from this uh, plant but this year I'm going to have more I think uh, I must admit I damaged one that broke off when I uh, was rebuilding my uh, greenhouse or basically redecorating it I let something fell on it and it cost me a cakey but luckily on the dendrobium berry odor it has a lot so otherwise I would have nine this time but I now have eight and meanwhile we have another one number four we have quite a big one here um, this one let me show it to you so that one is going off as well try to do it as, as carefully as I can and I'm holding this right above the roots like I showed you not not too high but also not too low just don't hold it uh, where the roots start that's basically what I'm trying to say this one is holding on quite much and whoops there it is it's also a little bit more green of the mother plant but it's okay and that's number five what is this oh this is a new cane this one it's quite a big one and we have also a new cakey there but that one is also too small so you can see the difference size wise and this one so this one is obviously way too young then we have two cakeys on one stem both of them are going off 
the whoops this one did go off quite easy that's number six number seven is like I said on the same um, was it on the same? no this one is uh, oh this one no I thought it was on the same cane I think I I uh, didn't look good enough <laughs> but it doesn't matter it's still a cake of course twist and turn pull a little bit and there you go another one and um, this one is number th is seven if I'm correct three four five six yes seven and then we have one here you can see it in top of the screen um, um, let me see three roots four roots and uh, quite a lot of roots are coming out of this cakey I'm sorry if that wasn't in focus we, I'm talking about this one it's kind of small but I give it a try so it would probably would be better to let it on a little bit longer but I I want new growths not new cakeys and so I need to um, that energy that the plant uh, is uh, now getting into these cakeys, I want it to have uh, to give that uh, energy into the new canes. So therefore, I like to get them off. This one is quite attached, probably because it's not completely ready to come off. But oh, there it is. So yeah, this one is a little bit short on the oops. Here we are on the roots, but they are growing. I did it before with one that had barely any roots and it did survive uh, quite easily with no problem. I only damaged this root tip there. I don't know if you can see it but it's a little bit damaged but it has enough other ones. We're ju just gonna keep an eye on this one and see if it, uh, if I'm not lying and it will work or not. So that is number eight. Uh, let me have a good look. Sometimes, because there are so many kings, I miss the cakeys. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. So we have eight, and we saw two cakeys. Two cakeys here, these guys we already saw, so that will make ten. Eleven. Uh, I did break one off, so that would, be, would have been twelve already. Um, so at least the same amount as last year, but I think there will be more. But at this stage I don't see them. Um, but I see a new growth, a smaller new growth there. So that's nice. And one... Let me twist and turn this. One new growth, you can see it on the... Oh, I'm sorry, it's a little bit out of... You can see it on the color of the leaves. It's a little bit lighter colored in comparison to the older leaves. But this is a new growth. Okay. Um, let's put an old plant back and we will put up the cakeys. So if you watch this channel uh, a bit longer, you know that I, I also use this stuff. This is lava, teeny tiny uh, lava rock and also teeny tiny uh, leka. But I must admit, I don't really like it. I like pumice and also the small pumice. But I had la this laid around, uh, doing nothing. So therefore, I like to use it. And I'm going to use it on these plants because I'm probably going to give them away anyhow. But it's it's working, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it, of course. But it's not uh, my preferred method. This uh, one, I do get quite high PPM uh, readings in, in my self-watering pots. And with the pumice, I... Uh, most of the times I can really get it uh, straight out of the bag and use it right away. But this stuff, no. So I have to flush them when I uh, put them up. I already did wash that, so to be clear. Okay, what I do, uh, like I said in the intro, or uh, a little bit earlier in this video, I like to use these uh, yogurt cups and I drill, well actually I burn two holes in them. And so therefore I'm uh, going to create my own uh, semi-hydroponic setup for a chain. So I'm going to use these cups and also I DIY some some uh, stands for in the in the pot to hold uh, so I can uh, um, put the argot uh, around this and it will hold them those in uh, in place. 
and I think these are really handy. Um, this is the first time I uh, used them in a plastic cup, so I, th I hope they work, but... Um, and what I basically mean, I don't hope they will get uh, top heavy, but I should go in like this, put media around it, put the argot in, and uh, tie it to this uh, string, and it should be okay. So, let's start putting them up. And putting this in, oh, first I need to have some wire ready, before I forget. I like to use this green wire. Personal, personal pres uh, preference there. <laughs> so, put a few bits of wire out already. Oops, in the bin. I have more, obviously. I will grab it in a second. Um, so I should first start filling up the cups with the uh, lava rock and uh, teeny tiny leka. Most of them are teeny tiny. I have a few bigger pieces, but most of them are quite small. I don't know where, I did find it somewhere online, but like I said, it's not my preferred uh, media to use. So therefore, I do not uh, use links in my video descriptions of these uh, kind of this kind of stuff. And also, I like to use the pumice, if you are interested in that. I obviously would, like to, uh, would be happy and like to uh, send you a link for pumice. But I do get mine in the garden store and then uh, the section... Um, um, they have it in the section of where you have the, the pond and plants for your ponds and uh, etc. They sell it there as a media for your ponds. I almost did forget something completely different. You may have noticed it, but um, the uh, cinnamon. I almost forget the cinnamon. I have this little teeny tiny pot. I think it's jam or something was in there. I don't know, but I, I, th I thought it would be funny to use for cinnamon and it's easy because I can easily dip my finger in it and put some cinnamon on there I had a little bit cinnamon on the roots you don't want to do that try to avoid it I need to keep it like this if I have it like this every excess that falls off falls first on the roots if, you, if I turn it around there are no roots there, so it can uh, fall on the table. I don't have it above this blue thing. It may look like that, but it's above the table. And that is it. So a little bit of cinnamon there. And that should do the trick. Um, it get, did go so easily. <laughs> yes. Before I put the cinnamon on, but I have it again. Where I want to have it. Like I said, I tie it. Quite firm. Put that root in a pot and I hold it with my finger and I put some media on there. And hopefully it will stay in the pot. Now it doesn't. That's okay. Because I have a layer of pebbles that will push the root down. Most of the times it will. Yeah, there you go. And there you go. We've potted up uh, the first cakey. And now you can see, whoops, the hole's a bit better. They are there. And I think it looks kind of nice. So, um, before this video gets uh, way too long, I will uh, do the exactly the same thing with the other ones and then we will back and have a overview of all of them potted up in semi hydroponic. So I will be right back. And there they are, are all potted up. What I did, I, I prepared some uh, 
RO water with some seaweed in it and I will show you the brand quickly if you are interested in which one I really like to use Biobis, I'm a really big fan of this uh, company and, and its projects but this is what I use just a little bit and thereby uh, with, uh, with that water I'm going to flush uh, the cups so I try to do this as best as I can I hope you can see uh, quite well what I'm doing let's put it there and just filling it up and let this water run through it like that and let me see where are the holes in this one I'm going to show it so you can see it a little bit better I'm going to turn it around for you and there you go Oops. The last three I need to do. flush them like this and then I'm going to turn them a little bit over so I try to empty that reservoir as much as I can because these roots are not used to uh, water uh, that amount of water yet only uh, the humidity that I have in the, grow grow uh, in the greenhouse I'm sorry so I'm going to uh, get some water out of there if I can find the holes Yes, put my fingers on top of it so the media doesn't fall out and I let the exit water get out like this, so at least most of it. A little bit is not that big of a problem. But I slowly want to adjust uh, these roots to a new system and also by being potted part part up. They were aerial roots obviously, so therefore they need a little bit of time to adjust and they will do that by start growing again and every single uh, uh, yeah basically every new part of that root will adjust to the situation in this case uh, semi-hydroponic so that's what I try to uh, create here but I will try to avoid a rot as much as I can so therefore I now get rid of the excess once they start to establish I will see roots going in the pot and of course I will do updates and then I will fill up the reservoir but like I said and now we are in summer we have quite beautiful hot days so therefore it's a little bit easier and this one is a little bit annoying uh, <laughs> yes let's do it like this and um, so that water will evaporate quicker than in winter so therefore a little bit of water in that reservoir will be there in uh, will be gone in probably two days I think something like that so that's not much a little dampness around the roots it's, it's okay in my experience but not too much and I like to use seaweed I really am a big fan of it I see so much difference differences with my augets in comparison to the, uh, when I didn't use it and now they start to make uh, new roots quite quite easily, quite quicker um, different opinions on the subject but I saw it with my own eyes and I'm pretty sure that it had a wonderful influences on those roots and getting the augets to be a little bit more happier than they were especially after repotting that's my experience, so I really like to use it so that's the last one and now I have to stop filming it's in the evening but it's already dark normally it's not a dark around uh, let's say uh, 8 o'clock now I think it's in the evening but we are getting a thunderstorm so it's easy now in the background but I <laughs> probably in a few minutes it will start and it's also already dark so it's we will have some rain so therefore I'm uh, going to continue filming this uh, tomorrow when it's uh, daylight and we can have another close-up 
and uh, look at the place where I place them and why I'm putting them in that section to start uh, them uh, growing on their own. So it's now the day after and the thunderstorm is gone. Luckily we didn't have much thunder, we did have some rain. But uh, now I can film again, so uh, let's go uh, from the orchid room on, into the greenhouse and have a look at the keikis where I put them and uh, have a little chat about them. And then um, we can uh, close up this video for now. And they are over here. Next to the mother plant, I thought it would be fun, and I have them uh, all in a uh, row there. And like I said, I don't give them any water for at least a few days. I will keep an eye on those roots. If it's going, uh, if it's going to be very dry in here, I may give them a little bit of water, but that's it. I only start watering when I really see roots growing, new roots growing, and those can adapt to the new situation. As long as there aren't any new growths, root-wise, anything, I will uh, keep an eye on them, but I don't water them that much, just barely any water. So this is it for now, and as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, I hope you like this video, let me know if you like these kinds of uh, videos, and obviously we will do some updates. So for now, once again, thank you and I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.